this episode of It's the End of the World as We Know It and I Feel Fine was made possible by contributions from slaves like you. Thank you very much. Vandalism is vandalism. Destruction is destruction, whether it's of lives or property. It's not acceptable. What do you think of the Boston Tea Party? I thought it was wonderful. It's the end of the world as we know it. I feel fine. Slaves, and welcome to another edition of It's the End of the World as We Know It, and I Feel Fine. Because sometimes you gotta fucking laugh. <laughs> I am your host, Stimulator, and yes, it's definitely feeling like the end of the motherfucking world. Scientists say 2012 gave us the hottest year on record so far. As a result, polar ice in the Arctic has been dissolving at an alarming rate. Scientists say Meanwhile, the two fecal dwellers who are competing for the position of corporate doggy style have been completely ignoring global I will fight to create more energy in this country to get America energy secure and part of that is bringing in a pipeline of oil from Canada and with respect to this pipeline that Governor Romney keeps on talking about we've created we've built enough pipeline to wrap around the entire earth once oh fuck it who gives a shit what these corporate meat puppets think well the motherfucking Texan resistance doesn't and for the past three fucking weeks has been choking the oil supply to the corporate death machine. An intrepid coalition of troublemakers bypassed the NGO industrial complex and put a stop to the Keystone XL pipeline, a giant metal cock hose that aims to bring grimy oil from the motherfucking tar sands to refineries in the Gulf of Mexico. The monkey renters have been having a ball playing hide and seek with the planet wrecking oil technicians. But it's not all been fun and games, and some peeps have been arrested, and others have come close to serious injury. These folks are asking for other wily hellraisers to join them in the forest. But if you can't make it to Texas, and have a couple of bucks to spare, visit tarsensblockade.org. Keeping things on the apocalyptic zone, Zionist commander Ben Netanyahu used complex visual aids to describe the allegedly sophisticated Iranian nuke catapult that threatens the apartheid state of Israel. But seriously, and I am not making this shit up, this is the best fucking graphic that this good for nothing racist could come up with? Where should a red line be drawn? A red line should be drawn right here. Actually, I think we should draw a red line right here. To simplify the amount of blow you must have been doing when you thought this whole thing up. Speaking of peace, Guess who got all that dynamite money for keeping things chill this year? The Norwegian Nobel Committee has decided that the Nobel Peace Prize for 2012 is to be awarded to the European Union. Are you fucking wangoing my tango? I got a feeling tonight, babe. We're gonna do it in a wango tango tonight, honey! I just had to get to the bottom of how this laughable gold medalist got chosen and track down Tom Jangler, hemp rock out the Novel Boom Duquettes. Yo, Jangle. <laughs> Were you on your fucking pea smoking rock before deciding? No. Yep, I am convinced. It is the motherfucking end. But no end of the world party will be complete without plenty of food and drink for your homies. But if you're a broke ass like me, all you have to do is follow the example of some unions in Spain who have been rolling up 20 deep into corporate supermarkets during business hours and straight up gangsta looting stores and ganking snacks and munchies for hungry peeps. But the Spanish are not only hungry for food, they are hungry for blood. Pig, Pig blood, blood, that, that is. is. This was exemplified by the anti-austerity protest last month, when peeps surrounded the parliament in a massive show of fury against the slave masters. El pueblo unido jamás será vencido. Gol! 
The following day, the streets of Athens were on fire, literally. A general strike mobilized thousands to Syntagma Square, where the familiar yet always inspiring battle between the anarchists and the fuzz ensued. Yo, Tape Ninja, go ahead and play the Athens riot porn. many names. It's a very simple, a very effective, a very destructive weapon. There's every reason to believe that it will be used much more often and much more effectively. Let, let, let me tell you something now. The natives is here. We back on the real shit. Caps will get pill quick. Here's a war mask for the family. The savage will feel this. I got that feeling. It's about that time that we coast up. Coast up like we supposed to. Feed them to the fish at the bottom of the ocean. It's that old shit brought back. Hot back like you're ready to kill for your fan. Kill for your tribe. you ready to die. And show me now is you really a savage. Cause if you is, then can you hear them songs they sung in the past? The ones for the savage native mate. Ain't afraid to pick that gun up and blast ya. And if I ask ya, would you actually be ready for that though? To protect and defend, they let us for dead. It's time to put some dead in these assholes. That's how it goes here. There's consequence to the action they made. They can't get away with a slaughter and rape that was brought to these places back in the day. That's all I have to say about that. They the pride till I'm coasting. Till the casket drops and blast shots. Gonna strap my hand with a full clip and to pray for peace is like praying for death in the way that we live in. Be ashamed to forgive them. Cause the shit they did wasn't made for forgiveness. <laughs> Last week, for the sixth year in a row, anarchist Eric McDavid spent his birthday in prison. He's got 13 more birthdays to go. McDavid was entrapped by the feeble brain imbeciles from the FBI into allegedly bombing a dam. Last month in Cleveland, four Occupy activists, Connor Stevens, Doug Wright, Joshua Stafford, and Brandon Baxter, pled guilty in a similar case to McDavid's. Last week, the state caged Leah Plant, Catherine Oleshnik, and Matt Duran for refusing to speak at a grand jury where the state was trying to get them to uh, name other anarchists. This shit is nothing new. Anarchists would like to see the state disappear, and so the state tries to disappear us. To help us unravel this disturbing history of government tyranny, I bring you Will Potter, author of Green is the New Red. Hey Will, how the fuck are you? I'm doing great, how are you? Well, I've been fasting for the past nine fucking days, and I feel like I could eat a tractor trailer full of tasty tacos, topped with salsa verde. And speaking of verde, you recently published a book called Green is the New Red. What the fuck? Green is the New Red is drawing a comparison to the Red Scare in the United States of the 20s and also the 40s and 50s of a period of U.S. history where people were demonized because of their political beliefs and being communist or perceived communist and subversives. And the point I'm trying to make is that we need to learn from these past eras of government repression and that very similar tactics are going on today. I heard that there's a not so funny story about why you wrote this fucking book hook a brother up. So I was working as a reporter at the Chicago Tribune when I decided to go out leafleting with a group of local activists and we hung door knockers in a residential neighborhood encouraging this executive to sever ties with this contract animal testing company. And that's all we did. And we hung leaflets. We were arrested and charged with disorderly conduct which all fell out and was thrown out of court. But the important part of that story is that a couple weeks later I had two FBI agents come to my door and threaten to put me on a domestic terrorist list unless I became an informant and helped investigate animal rights and environmental groups. And that was really a turning point for me in a lot of ways of making clear that 
these anti-terrorism resources, just a few months after September 11th, were going against lawful, above-ground activists. And so I really set out to find out how this all came about, how these terrorism policies got so skewed, how corporations created this manufactured threat to, to go after activists and to explain the importance of that, uh, what that threat means for all social justice movements. A lot of people who have been accused recently have been called terrorists. Are these folks really terrorists? And the word terrorist is being batted around without ever trying to explain what that means. It's really become a catch-all to go against the enemy of the hour. And in this case, going after so-called eco-terrorists. And I think if you were to talk to most people, regardless of how they think about environmental issues and these tactics, to most reasonable people, terrorism means killing civilians on a widespread scale, things like September 11th or uh, suicide bombings. Nothing like that has happened in the animal rights and environmental movements. Now, there have been some serious crimes that have cost corporations a lot of money, and I'm not arguing that they're not crimes, things like burning down a ski resort or burning SUVs, but they're nowhere on the same scale as what most Americans, what most people around the world think of when they think of that word. One of the groups that is featured in your book is the Shack 7. Break down for us who the fuck are the Shack 7 and why did the feds want to bring them down? So the Shack 7 are a group of animal rights activists that campaigned to shut down a notorious animal testing lab called Hunting and Life Sciences. And the campaign was called Stop Hunting and Animal Cruelty. And it was an incredibly effective campaign. They brought this multinational corporation down near bankruptcy multiple times. And it scared the daylights out of the pharmaceutical industry and many other industries who thought these tactics of home protests, boycotts, uh, email and phone blockades, electronic civil disobedience, and also an endorsement of sabotage and property destruction could be applied to other social justice movements and be just as effective against other corporations. And so they were hit with conspiracy charges, conspiracy to violate the Animal Enterprise Protection Act and commit animal enterprise terrorism. And I think the most important thing for people to know is that the government wasn't accusing them of actually stealing animals from laboratories or breaking windows. The government said that by vocally supporting a wide range of tactics and saying this on their website and saying it publicly, that they were part of a conspiracy through their words and through their beliefs. And it's a really chilling First Amendment ruling to say that you can hold people accountable because of their political beliefs and what others are doing in the name of the same cause. And it really reflected the importance and efficacy of their campaign, and also the desperation of politicians and these corporations. Is this shit just happening in the U.S.? This isn't confined to one country. These government and corporate tactics of demonizing activists are expanding across the world. Um, we've seen them appear in Spain, Austria, England, France, a little bit in Germany. Um, and we've, I've even found out in my research that U.S. law enforcement and FBI and Homeland Security have briefed counterterrorism officials in other countries about U.S. animal rights and environmental campaigns and the tactics that some of these groups are using. And the reason I wanted to bring that up is because it shows that how international these corporations are in trying to maintain their power. They're really trying to build connections across borders that aren't about nation states so much as just global economic power. And they feel that, th that power is being threatened internationally, um, as it should be. And that about this for this edition of It's the End of the World as We Know It and I Feel Fine. This is my fifth to last show, well, at least if the Mayans are right. If not, I'll be back in January 2013. Count on it. I want to say big fucking thanks to all the slaves who got into debt to help fund my report on the Quebec student riots. Aaron, Michael, Spencer, Brandon, Ben, Leah, Heath, Lynn, Richard, Sebastian, Seymour, Susie, Shannon, Sydney, Coin Eraser, Zary, Max, and Thomas. Obrigado. To comment on this show or to give me end of the world hot sauce recipe suggestions, just visit my fucking website, stimulator.tv. And don't forget your can opener. Yes, hey, hey, hey. Man,
me as so serious Gunshot, warning, grab your man and steer away from us Hey, 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 man of a man, them one and a bit Rum, 